people benefiting, more people seeing the site, more people learning from the site, and at the same time, making the site even better than what it was. We agreed together that if tourism does not make a place and the people better than what it was before the tourists came in, then it's not good tourism. But that a site and a place that is not visited by people is also really like an apple falling in the middle of a jungle. Nobody heard about it. Nobody really is affected by it. Did it really fall? It's really a very essential issue. When a site is declared as a World Heritage Site, based on scientific deliberations, careful studies, and determination that this is unique, it is an automatic, an automatic invitation to people to come and visit. It's a fact of life. It's a reality. And unless we come to terms with that reality, we are going to be only fooling ourselves and not being in terms with the reality. But the second most important element to this combination between culture, archaeology on one side and tourism on the other side is the community. And we came out with the two C's and a T, culture, community, and tourism. Tourism is the best friend for development if it is managed well. Tourism creates jobs. One out of 10 jobs all over the world now, a days, is from travel and tourism. One billion and one 1,087 million international tourists crossed borders in one year in 2013. That means one out of seven of the people of the world make an international trip every year. 9% of world GDP is from travel and tourism, and it's growing every year. In Europe, in Italy, in Spain, in Greece, countries that are passing through great difficulties economically, the only sector that is picking them up is tourism. Five and a half percent, six percent was the growth this year, last year, and the year before. We cannot deny the people these benefits, but we have to channel it and manage it the right way. And that's our challenge. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make people understand that tourists are not their enemies, they're your best ambassadors. You have to manage them right to make sure that they feel responsible and that they feel good. And we have two tools to help us do this. One is good practice, good management. Stick to a good manual of management. Two, technology. We have not utilized technology to make our visitation and our impact of tourism on the ground a good one. Tourism, the way we see it, because both UNESCO and UNWTO are two United Nations specialized agency. We are seeing ourselves as a development tool, as a force for good, as a force for good for people and the planet. This is the formula that we're trying to draft together. And that's why when Ugo Piccarelli invites me to come here, I come as, soon as, as much as I can whenever the chance are pointing, because what he's doing is a tremendous job. Just to name this forum, archaeology and tourism, by itself, is a striking message. We need to, together, try to end this debate about numbers are scaring us. Numbers don't scare me. The more people travel, the better this world becomes. The more we see other things, we learn from other cultures, we learn from other people. We become better people when we travel. We become more respectful of the places we see and of the cultures that we come in touch with. That is exactly the message that Ugo and we are trying to disseminate together. Let us turn the 100,000 travelers, the 1 billion travelers, into one billion opportunities, not one billion disasters, because they can become disasters if we mismanage them. If one billion travelers decide to leave their plastic bottles at the place that they visit, the world becomes a garbage dump. But if one billion travelers decide 
that they are going to stick to the ethics of visiting a place, that they are going to contribute to the economy of the local community. They are going to hire a local guide, eat from the local food, the beautiful cheese that you have here in Pastum.